Welcome to Kids Quest from the Chattanooga Public Library with Olga and Shelley. Today we are curious about birds that can't fly. Sorry, penguin. What makes a bird a bird? Well, all birds have feathers, wings, a beak or a bill, and most birds can fly. But did you know that not all birds can fly? Why can't all birds fly if they have wings and feathers? Because some birds have changed over time and they have adapted to life on land. New Zealand has more flightless birds than any other country. One reason for this is that thousands of years ago, New Zealand didn't have any land mammals to prey on birds. And so the birds did not have to use their wings to fly away from predators. So, over generations, the more they walked on the ground and avoided flying, the more their wings and flight muscles became smaller and weaker, while their legs became stronger and sturdier. The most well-known flightless bird in New Zealand is the kiwi. The kiwi is a very cute bird, about the size of a chicken, with a really good sense of smell. Unfortunately, people have brought dogs, cats, and weasels into New Zealand, and now the kiwis are endangered. Another well-known flightless bird is the ostrich. Ostriches can be found in the savannas and the Sahel of Africa. The ostrich is the largest and heaviest bird in the world. It can weigh up to 320 pounds and be as tall as 9 feet. Ostriches use their large wings when running to help with steering and balance to shade their young and in courting displays. Ostriches have evolved strong legs and feet with large sharp claws. They can run up to 43 miles per hour. In the savanna, ostriches encounter possible predators such as lions. But an ostrich's legs are so strong that just one kick is enough to kill a lion. Perhaps the best known flightless bird is the penguin. All penguins, except for the Galapagos penguin, live in the southern hemisphere. That's the part of the world that's below the equator. Because penguins spend most of their lives in the ocean, their bodies have adapted to life in the water. Their wings have become shorter and stiffer, a lot like flippers. So instead of using their wings to fly, they use them as flippers. Also, the shape of the penguin's body became wide in the middle, but coming to a point in the ends, a shape that makes it easy to move through the water. These adaptations make penguins extremely fast swimmers and experts at catching their food in the ocean. And now for our art project. We are going to make ostrich paintings. Here's a picture of a real ostrich so you can remember what they look like. These are the supplies you will need. Two pieces of white construction paper, a small piece of orange construction paper, a very small piece of black construction paper, a black marker, a pencil, some glue, a fork, and some paint. You can use a single color or a few different ones. You can use grays and browns to make your ostrich more realistic or you can use bright colors like I did. We'll begin by dipping our fork into our first color and making a big X towards the top of your paper. This is going to be the head of the ostrich. Once you have your head started, we want to work on the neck. Take it all the way down to the bottom of the page, but don't make it as big as the head. Start layering on different colors and keep adding on until you feel that it's as hairy and fluffy and thick as you want it. Then we will let it dry before we add on the beak and the eyes. Draw the mouth. It's 
like a big triangle. Add some nostrils and then use a black marker to go over it. Then we'll cut it out. Okay, next we'll make the eyes. I'm not very good at making circles, so if you're not either, grab something round and draw around it. Fold your paper so you only have to cut once. Cut out your circles for the eyes. Great. Now fold your black paper. Again, find something to draw around and cut it out. Great. Now we need to glue the pupils onto the eyes. And now once your painting is nice and dry, you can put some glue on the back of your beak. And glue it on towards the bottom of the head and do the same for the eyes. Put plenty of glue on the back and glue them on. And now your ostrich painting is ready. Thank you for joining us and stay curious.